Good morning, friends. Today we are going to discuss the residential status. Uh, why I choose this chapter for today's session is one of the major amendment bought by uh, Finance Act 2020 in this chapter. So we need to discuss the changes along with the rest of the provision of this chapter. Let's start with residential status. Few points you need to remember while determining residential status. What is the importance of residential status? The levy of income tax is more on a resident person and the levy is lesser on a non-resident person. But how we will determine whether the person is a resident in India or not resident in India? For that, for de for determination, for determining the residential status of each and every person, our Act, Income Tax Act 1961, holds few provisions. We are going to discuss those provisions one by one. Before going through the provisions, we need to understand these key points. Residential status may vary from year to year. That means if a person if an individual is said to be a resident in India in previous year 2019-20, he may be non-resident in previous year 2020-21. And he may again be resident in India for financial year or previous year 2021-22. That means you need to determine residential status of a person for each and every previous year. That is not like that. If you determine resident once you are a resident, then always a resident, this concept is not applicable. You need to determine residential status of each and every person for each and every previous year. Single status for each source of income. What does it mean? That means, suppose an individual is said to be resident, an individual is a resident for salary income, then he will be considered as a resident in India for all other sources of income. He, he cannot say that I am resident for salary income, but I am non-resident for my other sources of income. It is not true. He, if he is a resident for one source of income, then he is a resident for all type of source of income. Citizenship and residential status. Residential status and citizenships are two different concepts. You are not supposed to be confused with uh, citizenship and residential status. Citizenship, if suppose you are an Indian citizen, that does not mean you are a resident in India. You may be resident or you may not be resident in India. Similarly, if you are not a citizen of India, then you cannot say that since I am not a citizen of India, then I am a non-resident. That is not true. You may or may not be citizen of India, but you may or may not be resident in India. Country specific. That might be happen that you may have same residential status for two or more countries. For example, you are a resident in India simultaneously uh, for a particular previous year and simultaneously you may be a resident of US or UK or another country for that particular previous year because the law governing uh, may be uh, you are you may satisfy the provision of this chapters uh, and the provision of corresponding chapters of that country that might happen that you may be a uh, resident of both the countries. Okay, now determination of residential status. First, we are discussing individual. How to determine residential status of an individual? Section 6, subsection 1. An individual may be categorized as a resident and non resident. Resident and non resident. If few conditions are satisfied, then that individual is said to be resident in India. Otherwise, that person shall be considered as a non-resident in India. What are the conditions? You need to satisfy, that individual need to satisfy either of these two conditions. That individual is required to satisfy either of 
these two conditions to become a resident in India. What are the, these conditions? Section 61A that says if that individual stays in India during the previous year for 182 days or more, if that particular individual is in India for 182 days or more during the relevant previous year. Suppose Mr. X stay in India for 190 days during the financial year 2020-21. He shall be considered as a resident in India. Though he is a foreign national, his citizenship uh, is, uh, he is a UK citizen, it is, uh, it hardly matters. If his stay during the particular previous year is 182 days or more, then he will be termed as a resident in India for particular previous year. Be careful. During that particular previous year, he should stay in India for 182 days or more. If suppose Mr. X visits India, Mr. X, a foreign national, visit India um, for uh, 200 days, for 200 days, terms in India, on 1st January 2021. Can you say that particular Mr. X is a resident in India since his stay is for 200 days for the previous year 2020-21? No, because during that particular previous year 2020-21, his stay in India is only for 90 days, uh, January 31st, 28 and then 31 almost 90 days, then he is said to be a non-resident in India. Okay. His continuous stay in India for 200 days, you need to break down that 200 days because there is a cutoff in the previous year. Previous year has changed. If during particular previous year, his stay in India is for 182 days or more, then only he can be considered as a resident in India. In our example, his stay in India for the previous year 2020-21 is only for 90 days. He cannot, he may not be considered as a resident in India, though his stay, all his stay is for 200 days. But Vasal Dusra or Yesal Dusra. Number second condition, either or, you need to satisfy either the either of these two conditions. Number second, he should stay in India for 60 days or more plus during the four preceding previous year, his stay in India is for 365 days or more. If an individual satisfied either of these two conditions, what are these conditions? I am giving option number one. Option one, during that particular previous year, he is in India for 182 days or more. He is a resident in India. Number second option, he is in India during that particular previous year for 60 days or more. Plus, that means these two, uh, for condition number two, there are two sub conditions. Number one, his stay in India for that particular previous year is for 60 days or more. Plus, during four preceding previous year, he is in India for 365 days or more. If these two conditions are satisfied, then we can say that condition number two, that is section six, one C is satisfied. He is a resident in India. What are the four preceding previous year? Just before that particular previous year for which you are determining the residential status. For example, if you are determining residential status for previous year 2020-21, then that individual should be in India for 60 days or more. Plus, during this four previous year, the total of his stay during this four previous year, 1920, 18, 19, 17, 18, and 16, 17 should be 365 days or more. Then we can say that Mr. X is a resident in India. Though he uh, did not res uh, reside in India for 182 days or more during that particular previous year, he will be termed as a resident in India. He need to satisfy one of these
two conditions. Number next, some key points are given or there. Stay at same place in India is not necessary. Suppose he resides in India for uh, 200 days, but for 60 days he was in Delhi. For next 60 days he was in Kolkata and for remaining tenure he was in Mumbai. You cannot say that since his stay was not at a single place, then we, we cannot consider him as a resident in India. That is not the criteria. He might be, uh, his stay might be uh, at same place or different places in India, but you are required to calculate, you are required to consider India as a whole. If his stay in India during that particular previous year is for these days, then he shall be termed as a resident in India. Continuous stay in India is not required. For example, uh, for in the month of the April 2020, he visits India for 20 days and goes back to his country and again visits in the month of June for 60 days. And, and in, in that manner, he resides in India in a staggered way. He resides in India for 180 days or 60 or whatever with the condition that also be considered as a resident in India. The condition is not like that continuous stay. His stay during that particular previous year should exceed these amount of days. Suppose a person is resides in territorial water of India. What is the territorial water of India? For example, this is the southern part of the India and here are the sea. It's not like that. Say this is that Jagannath Puri, sea beach Jagannath Puri. You put your, uh, 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 you just push yourself to into the sea. You become, uh, you cannot say that I am out of India right now. To some extent, up to 12 nautical miles, up to 12 nautical miles, this is the part of the territorial water of India and territorial water of India shall be considered as a part of India. That means if a person resides over here, it shall also considered as his stay in India. Got it? One example is there. Same came to India first time during the previous year 2020-21. During the particular previous year, he stay in India for 50 days, 183 days and 153 days. Determine his residential status for previous year uh, uh, 2020-21 or you make a sense, say that assessment year 2021-22. If this is the case, that is the 50 days, since he fails to satisfy either of the condition given under section 6-1, he was not in India for 183 days during that particular previous year, even he was not in India for 60 days for that particular previous year, hence that person shall said to be a non-resident in India for the previous year 2020-21. Number next is 183 days. Since he satisfied one of the condition, since he satisfied one of the condition that is 182 days or more, hence that person shall be considered as a resident in India. Number third, 153 days. He fails to satisfy condition number one. Hence, you are required to check condition number two. Condition number two says 60 days during that particular previous year. Yes, he stayed 60 days or more during that particular previous year. Plus, but there is a plus, plus 365 days during the four immediately preceding four, uh, previous years. But in the question itself, it is mentioned that his visit in India is first time. Hence, he fails to satisfy condition number two. 60 days is fine. But 365 days condition, he fails to satisfy. Hence, that person is considered as a non-resident in India for the particular previous year, that is 2020-21. Got it? Number next. Andy, a British national, comes to India for the first time during 2016-17. During the financial year 2016, 17, 17, 18 to 2021, he was in India for these number of days. Determine his residential status for the assessment year 2020-21. Now, you need to calculate number of days, how many number of days he stayed in India during the particular previous year. First of all, you need to check 
during the particular previous year during the previous year 2020-21 his stay was in india for only for 70 days hence he is not satisfying condition number one that is 182 days or more we need to check condition number two that is 60 plus 365 whether he is satisfying condition number two or not since he's stayed during the particular previous year is more than 60 days first part is satisfied another part is preceding four years equal to 365 or more 2016 17 17 18 18 19 19 20 his number of days are given 55, 60, 80, 160. Altogether, it comes to 355 days. Though he was in India for 60 or more days, but he was not in India. His stay was not up to 365 days or more during the immediately four preceding previous year. Hence, that person, that Mr. Andy, shall be considered as a non-resident. Why? He fails to satisfy either of the conditions given under section 6.1. Okay. Exceptions. There are few exceptions to rule number 2. What is the rule number 2? 60 days plus 365 days. An Indian citizen living in India during the previous year for employment purpose or as a member of crew of an Indian ship if these two conditions uh, in this two scenario suppose you are living you are an indian citizen living in india for employment purpose then condition number two is not applicable in your case that means for uh, determining your residential status or a person who are an indian citizen living in india during the particular previous year for determining the residential status of this type of person, condition number two is not relevant. Condition number two is not applicable. Then how we will determine his residential status? This type of person, in this type of case, the person, that individual required to be stay in India for 182 days or more during the previous year. If he decides if he stay in India for 182 days or more in India during that particular previous year, then only he is considered as a resident in India. Otherwise, he shall not be considered as a resident in India. Got it? Number two, as a member of crew of an Indian ship, a person is going to foreign in a ship as a crew member, as a staff member of that Indian ship that then condition number two is not applicable for determining residential status of this type of person this type of individual condition number two is not applicable he is said to be resident in india only if his uh, stay in india during that particular previous year is for 182 days or more that it or oh, condition of this this uh, please please remove this we are discussing in our next slide. Please start this one. This is the major change. Exception. Where modified provision is applicable. Where modified provision of section 61C, that is condition number two, is applicable. What are the modification? This is the new, this is the latest amendment brought by Finance Act 2020. In case of an Indian citizen or a person of Indian origin, if you are an Indian citizen or you are a person of Indian origin, what is the meaning of person of Indian origin? Person of Indian origin means who himself, his parents or his grandparents, maternal or paternal, born in undivided India. If you yourself your parents either either you or your parents or your grandparents maternal or paternal born in undivided india what do you mean by the undivided india just before 1947 including that pakistan born in india either of them born in india 
then that person shall be considered as a person of indian origin got it if you are an indian citizen or a person of indian origin comes to visit to india comes on a visit to india during the particular previous year then you shall be considered as a resident in india if you are satisfying condition number 1 that is 182 days or more and if you are satisfying this modified condition number 2 what is the modified condition number 2 original con condition number 2 is what original condition number 2 is 60 plus 365 now the modified version applicable only in this type of situation what is the situation you are a person of indian origin or an indian citizen comes on a visit to india during that particular previous year the modified version is that if your total income other than income from foreign sources exceeds rupees 15 lakh during that particular previous year then you said to be resident in india if his if your stay in india is for 120 days or more not exceeding 182 days if you exceeds 182 days then condition number 1 is automatically satisfied you uh, you are not required to check condition number 2 you will be said you you will be considered as a resident in india by virtue of condition number 1 your stay in india instead of 60 days the number of days has been increased up to 120 days 120 days or more up to 181 days plus 365 days or more during the last four preceding previous year if you satisfied this condition then you said to be a resident in india then in this situation you have two condition if you are satisfying any of the condition then you are said to be a resident in india what are these two condition number 1 you are satisfying section 61a that is 182 days or more then without any other criteria you are said to be a resident in india if you are not satisfying condition number 1 then you need to check condition number 2 what is the condition instead of 60 plus 365 your criteria is um, um, somehow uh, extended up to 120 days plus 365 what are the situation the situation is that you are a indian citizen or a person of indian origin comes on a visit to india during that particular previous year and your income other than income from foreign sources exceeds rupees 15 lakh exceeds rupees 15 lakh if all these conditions are satisfied then only then only this modified version of condition number 2 is applicable that is 120 plus 365 if your Uh, you are a person of indian origin or an indian citizen comes on a visit to india during that particular previous year but your income other than income from foreign sources does not exceeds 15 lakh then this condition condition number 2 is not applicable that is not relevant why this is not applicable because you need to stay in india during that particular previous year for 182 days plus 365 if you are if your stay in india is 182 days or more then you are automatically satisfying condition number 1 that is section 61a got it number next this is also a major amendment brought by finance act 2020 deemed resident section 6 sub section 1a an individual shall be deemed to be resident that means whether you are an Uh, you are your stay was 182 days or not or 60 days or not if you are satisfying these conditions then you shall be considered you shall be deemed as a resident in india what are the conditions you are a citizen of india be careful the wordings are limited only the citizen of india not or person of indian origin person of indian origin is not written in the provision of section 61a but earlier in earlier provision in earlier provision earlier exception it is indian citizen or a person of indian origin but now in this deemed provision 
in this deemed provision the person of indian origin is missing number second criteria his total income other than income from foreign sources exceeds rupees 15 lakh he is not satisfying any of the condition given under section 61 that is 182 days or 60 days plus 365 days or 120 days or whatever be the you are not satisfying either of the conditions and he is not liable to tax in any other country or territory by reason of his domicile or residence or any other criteria you are a person of uh, you are a citizen of india your income other than foreign sources other than income from foreign sources exceeds rupees 15 lakh you are not a resident in india by virtue of section 61 and you are not liable to pay tax in any other country if all these conditions are simultaneously fulfilled then you will be considered as a resident in india you will be deemed as a resident in india irrespective of your number of stay in india got it this is the latest amendment brought in the statute book by finance act 2020 example miss paul an indian citizen left india for first time on 1st april 2020 for joining job in tokyo she came to india on 11th jan 2021 for only 170 days determine her residential status for previous year 2021 now you need to calculate number of days is her stay in india during the particular previous year during the particular previous year that is previous year 2021 she was in india for in the month of april she was on first uh, he left on she left on first april one is considered as his, her stay in india and he came back on 11th january 2021 hence in the month of january he was she was in india for 21 days in the month of feb 28 days in the month of march 31 though a total stay for 170 days but there is a break in the financial year break in the previous year during that particular previous year 2021 she was in india for 81 days hence she is not satisfying condition number 1 that is 182 days or more now we need to check whether she is satisfying condition number 2 or not since she is living in india she left india for his for her employment for her employment for her employment hence condition number 2 is not applicable hence condition number 2 is not applicable her residential status for previous year 2020 21 is non resident got it got it now if a person is a if a person is a resident in india if an individual is a resident in india then you need to further classify them into ordinary resident or not ordinary resident ordinary resident or not ordinary resident to become an ordinary resident to become a ordinary resident an individual needs to satisfy dual conditions given under section 66 these two conditions are required to be satisfied simultaneously be careful for the purpose of uh, for determining residential status whether she or he is a resident or non resident you need to satisfy either of the condition given under section 61 koi bhi ek lekin if you are a resident in india then you are further sub classified into ordinary resident or not ordinary resident to determine whether you are a ordinary resident you need to satisfy that individual required to satisfy dual condition given under section 66 you need to satisfy both of the condition given under section 66 i am repeating myself if 
you are an ordinary resident if someone is saying that you are an ordinary resident that means what can i presume you are satisfying one of the condition given under section 61 and both the condition given under section 66 what are the conditions given under section 66 during the seven preceding previous year during the seven preceding previous year earlier we discussed about four preceding previous year now it is seven preceding previous year your stay in india for 730 days or more during this seven previous year during this seven previous year if your stay in india is for 730 days or more then condition number 1 of section 66 is satisfied and be careful here it is and you need to satisfy both condition to become an ordinary resident you are you are resident in india in last 10 preceding previous year for two times at least for two times by virtue of any of the conditions section 61a or section 61c if by virtue of any of the condition given under section 61 you are resident in india for two times during the last 10 years then this condition number 2 is considered as satisfied if these do uh, both of these conditions are satisfied then you shall be considered an ordinary uh, a resident uh, individual shall be considered as an ordinary resident in india otherwise at that resident individual shall be considered as a not ordinary resident in india got it further a non resident is not sub categorized like ordinary non resident or not ordinary non resident that is not the case if you are resident then you are required to sub categorize yourself if you are a non resident chapter is closed got it what are the two conditions given in the section 66 number 1 you are in india for 730 days or more during the seven preceding previous year and you are resident for or two years in 10 immediately preceding previous year exception to these rules what are the exception if you satisfied the given these conditions then you are considered as a not ordinary resident resident but not ordinary resident what are the conditions you are a citizen of india his total income other than income from foreign sources exceeds rupees 15 lakh during the previous year your income other than income from foreign sources exceeds rupees 15 lakh you are not liable to pay tax in any of the country due to whatever the reason and you are considered as a deemed resident under section 61a uh, i think you learned about these conditions earlier few slides back we discussed about these conditions where we uh, discussed that is the deeming provision you will consider as a deemed resident in india if you are considered as a deemed resident in india under section 61a in short you will be considered as a not ordinary resident in india you will be considered as a deemed resident but which type of resident ordinary or not ordinary then you will be considered as a not ordinary resident if you are a resident due to provision of section 61a that is you satisfied all these conditions then that deemed resident person shall be considered as a not ordinary resident in india got it exception number 2 we discussed all everything is discussed in earlier slide we are just determining whether you are ordinary or not ordinary an individual shall be deemed to be a resident but not ordinary resident in india if following conditions are satisfied though you are satisfying dual condition of section 66 but if these conditions are fulfilled then you will be considered as a not ordinary resident what are the condition we already know about this type of condition you are an indian citizen or a person of indian origin you comes to india for a visit purpose during the particular previous year 
your total income other than income from foreign sources exceeds rupees 15 lakh during the previous year and your stay in india for a particular period, for that previous year is for 120 days or more but not more than one uh, but less than 182 days during the previous year plus 365 days or more during the four preceding previous year if you are a resident due to these type of conditions we already discussed about this type of condition there here it is this one if you are a resident due to this criteria if you are a resident due to this criteria not due to other criteria then you shall be considered as a not ordinary resident got it got it if you are considered as a resident in india due to amended section 6 or section 61a in the newly inserted section 61a then you shall be considered as a not ordinary resident in india even though you satisfied dual conditions given under section 66 which is the dual condition 730 plus 2 years that it there is an example a b c d are the cases now citizenship mr a is a foreigner foreign citizenship is he a person of indian origin yes he is a person of indian origin total income excluding income from foreign sources exceeds rupees 15 lakh yes liable to pay tax in any other country no stay in india during the previous year 30 days he stay in india only for 30 days stay in india during preceding four years 380 days dual conditions given under section 6 is satisfied yes he satisfied dual condition that is 730 days plus two years to the years resident what will be his residential status whether he will be considered as a resident or non-resident since is he stay in India only for 30 days? Hence, he is not satisfying condition number one, that is 182 days or more. 60 days plus 365 days he is not satisfying. Whether 60 or 60 days is applicable or 120 days is applicable, 120 is applicable. He is not satisfying that condition. But there is one more provision, section 61A. If his total income exceeds rupees 15 lakh other than income from foreign sources and is not liable to pay tax in any other country, both of these conditions are satisfied. His income, excluding income from foreign sources, exceeds rupees 15 lakh and he is not liable to any other country. What will be his residential status? Non resident. Why? As per the provision of section 61A, Section 6 1A is applicable only in case of person of Indian citizen, not person of Indian, person of Indian origin. Be careful. We discussed about that thing. Be careful. Section 6 1A is applicable only in case of citizen of India, not on person of Indian origin. Since Mr. A Mr. A is not an Indian citizen, hence provision of section 61A is not applicable. Further, he was not in India for 120 days or more, hence these conditions and that person is considered as a non-resident in India. Number two, I highlighted citizenship now of Mr. B is in India. Is he a person of Indian origin? Yes. Total income exceeds rupees 15 lakh? No. Liable to pay tax in any other country? No. Since uh, stay in India during the previous year, 30 days and uh, 380 days and dual conditions are satisfied? Yes. Still, he will be considered as a non resident. Why? First of all, 61A, you are required to examine 61A. 61A, whether his income exceeds rupees 15 lakh? No. 61A is not applicable. Now we are going to our regular provision. 182 days or more, he fails because his, his stay in India is only for 30 days. 
and obviously condition number 2 is not uh, satisfied one condition number 2 is 182 days plus 365 days since his stay in india is only for 30 days during the particular previous year he is not satisfying any of the condition and section 61a is not applicable because he is not a, uh, because his income does not exceed rupees 15 lakh hence he his residential status is non resident since he is a non resident a non resident individual is not further sub classified as a not ordinary or ordinary case number c his citizenship is in india person of indian origin yes total income exceeds rupees 15 lakh yes liable to pay tax in any other country no stay in india during the previous year 30 days 380 days yes since his stay is only for 30 days he is regular um residential if we check the regular conditions for determining residential status he is a non resident but due to the provision of section 61a that is the deeming provision what are the deeming provision he should be a citizen of india yes he is an indian citizen his income other than income from foreign sources exceeds rupees 15 lakh yes his income exceeds rupees 15 lakh he is not liable to pay tax in any other country yes he is not liable to pay tax in any other country if these conditions are fulfilled he will be deemed as a resident in india first of all he is not satisfying any other condition given under section 61 hence uh, but he is satisfying conditions given under section 61a his residential status is resident in india since he is a resident in india due to the deeming provision of section 61a his uh, he is classified as a not ordinary resident though he satisfied dual condition given under section 66 be careful though he is satisfying con uh, dual condition given under section 66 since he is a resident due to the provision of section 61a he should be a not ordinary resident case number d citizenship india person of indian origin yes total income exceeds rupees 15 lakh yes liable to pay tax in any other country yes since he is liable to pay tax in any other country provision of section 61a is not applicable first number 2 number of stay in india you are required to be examined 182 days or more no 60 or more no he is a non resident e citizenship foreign citizenship person of indian origin yes total income exceeds 15 lakh yes liable to pay tax in any other country no stay in india during the previous year 138 days stay in india during four years immediately preceding four years immediately preceding previous year 380 days dual condition are satisfied yes now section 61a is not applicable because he is a foreign citizen 182 days he resides in india for 182 days or more no condition number 2 whether modified condition is applicable or not since he is a person of indian origin we are deeming as a, he visits to india for uh he comes to india for visit purpose in that situation whether 120 days plus 365 days is applicable or 60 or plus 365 days is applicable in this situation 120 plus 365 days modified version of condition number 2 is applicable that is his stay in india is 138 days which is more than 120 days and less than 182 days and during the preceding 4 years his stay was uh, for 380 days that exceeds 365 days hence he is a resident person hence he is a resident person further he satisfied dual condition given in the section 66 sir if he is a resident in india due to modified conditions given in the section 61c he will be considered as a not ordinary resident even though even though he satisfied dual condition of section 66 got it number f 
foreign citizenship, person of Indian origin, yes. Total income exceeds, yes. Liable to pay tax in other country, no. Stay in India 185 days. Stay in India during four years, immediately pursuing 182. Are dual conditions satisfied? Yes. Sir, kuch nahi sochna hai. 1A, 120, kuch nahi sochna hai. His stay in India is for 180 days or more. He satisfied condition number one of section 6.1. That is 6.1A. He is a resident in India. Since he is a resident in India due to condition given under section 6.1A, and he is also satisfying dual condition given under section 66. Hence, his residential status is resident and ordinary resident. Resident and ordinary resident. Got it? Number G, citizenship Indian. He is a person of Indian origin. Yes. Income exceeds rupees 15 lakh. No. Uh, liable to pay tax in any other country? No. Stay in India during the previous year for 85 days. Stay in India in preceding four years, 380 days. Dual condition satisfied? Yes. What will be residential status? He is a person of Indian origin or Indian citizen. His income does not exceed rupees 15 lakh. Hence, modified version, that is 182 days plus 365 days is applicable. His stay is only for 85 days during the uh, particular previous year. Hence, condi neither condition number one nor condition number two are satisfied. Hence, his residential status is not resident, non-resident. Last one, foreign. Uh, is a person of Indian origin? No. Total income exceeds? No. Liable to pay tax in any other country? No. Stay in India during the previous year, 85 days. Last four years, 380 days. Dwell condition satisfied? Yes. 60 plus 365 plus 66. Residential status is resident and ordinary resident. Any question? Uh, one example is there. Miss Monica, a foreign national, comes to India every year for 90 days since 2005-06. Determine her res residential status for the previous year, 2020-21. What will be her residential status? Since during the previous year, she was in India for only for 90 days. Only for 90 days. Hence, she is not satisfying condition number one, that is 182 days. Now we need to check condition number two, that is 60 plus 365. Modified version is applicable or not? Since he is a foreign national, modified version is not applicable. He was in, she was in India for 90 every year 90 days into four years, comes to 360 days. Though she resides in India, she stay in India for 90 days, that is more than 60 days during the previous year, 2020-21, but her stay in India for four preceding previous year is only for 360 days. Her residential status for previous year, 2020-21 is of not resident, non-resident. Will your answer differ if she comes to India for 100 days instead of 90 days or more? In that situation, her stay during that particular previous year is for 100 days. She is not satisfying condition number one. We need to determine whether she is satisfying condition number two or not. 100 days, 60 say jada hai. First part is okay. What about another part? That means 100 into four that is 400 days 365 or more she is satisfying condition number two of section 61 that is section 61 c she will be termed as a resident in india for previous year 2020-21 once you say that she is a resident you need to determine whether she is an ordinary resident or not ordinary resident whether she is an ordinary resident or not ordinary resident now for become uh, for 
uh, ordinary resident she need to satisfy dual condition given under section 66 one of the condition is 750 days or more during the seven preceding previous year if i multiply 100 into 7 comes to 700 days which is lesser than 750 days though he she is a resident in india but fails to satisfy dual condition given under section 66 she will be termed as a resident but not ordinary resident what happened if she comes india for 110 days instead of 90 days same same 110 days 110 into 4 440 days 110 into 7 comes to 770 days she is a resident she is satisfying dual condition of section 66 hence she is termed as a resident and ordinary resident in india got it uh i think any query the class is for only for one hour uh do i discussed about uh, amendments now any query any query someone is asking about domicile domicile that uh, residential status if someone is asking that in the previous example of 110 days she will be not ordinary no sir. no mr patas she is a ordinary resident why is resident it is very clear whether she is satisfying condition number uh, condition or given under section 66 first she is in india for 770 days in 7 years immediately preceding uh, previous year number 1 condition is fulfilled 730 plus conditions are fulfilled number 2 is she is a resident in india for two times out of 10 years since uh, her stay is only continuously for 110 days she is a resident in india for each and every year hence she is satisfying dual condition given under section 66 she is considered as a ordinary resident in india anyone else i think this uh, record uh, 
uh, this recording is available in this uh, tool that is uh, Microsoft Teams. There are two amendments made in the residential status chapter. Those are the major changes. Number one, the condition applicable for the person of Indian origin or Indian citizen comes to visit, comes to India for visit purpose. Earlier, condition number two is not applicable for this type of person. Now, the modified version is applicable. The modified version is like this. A, his total income, excluding income from foreign sources, exceeds 15 lakh, then instead of 60 days, we are required, uh, she, uh, the person is said to be resident if he was in India for 120 days or more, but less than 182 days, plus 365 days or more in the immediately for preceding previous year. If his income does not exceed rupees 15 lakh, then condition number two is not applicable. And number next amendment is insertion of provision of section 618 that is deeming provision. If you are an Indian citizen, your income exceeds rupees 15 lakh other than income from foreign sources and you are not liable to pay tax in any other country. If these conditions are satisfied, then you are considered as a deemed resident in India. If you are a uh, resident in India due to condition number one or two, then uh, this provision is not applicable. If you are not satisfying any of the condition given under section 61, but you are satisfying the provision given under section 61A, you are an Indian citizen, your income exceeds rupees 15 lakh, other than income from uh, other than income from foreign sources, and uh, you are not liable to pay tax in any other country, then you are considered as a deemed resident in India. And if you are considered as a deemed resident in India, your residential status is resident but not ordinary resident. These are the amendments. Mr. Prakash is again saying that since she is not uh, satisfying dual condition, first, if she is a resident, why she is a resident in India during this particular previous year, 110 into 4 plus 160 plus 365 days. He satisfies the rule number 2. In each and every year, she is a resident in India by satisfying rule number 2. Hence, she is satisfying 2 out of 10. Even though 2 out of 10, she is satisfying 10 out of 10. Okay, I think everything is clear right now. Remaining portion, I'm not, uh, due to time constant, I'm not able to complete this part. Uh, how to determine residential status of HUF company or farm or other person. What will be the impact of residential status on your uh, determination of your total income? The session should be for two hours. I will request the institute. Any other query? Thank you.